Hi, I'm your host, Vasco Duarte. Welcome to the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast, where we share tips and tricks from Scrum Masters around the world. Every day, we bring you inspiring answers to important questions that all Scrum Masters face day after day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Change Leadership episode uh, this week with Guru Charan Patki, or as we know him, Guru. Hey, Guru. Welcome back. Thanks, Vasco. Nice to be here, enjoying every every session of this. Absolutely. Uh, it's been a pleasure so far, and I'm excited to hear your change story, because on Wednesdays, of course, we talk about how Scrum Masters are so often involved with change processes. So tell us that story. Walk us through the steps as the story unfolds of how that change process happened, but also highlight for us the tips, the tricks, the tools, and the techniques you learned back then that you still apply today? Sure. All right. So it's interesting, right? I mean, the role of a Scrum Master is, is very interesting. We say that, you know, the leadership style is servant leadership. And people who come with, um, you know, a, a previous era of project management usually don't get into it because, you know, it's always about chasing people, right? Um, you know, what have you completed? Where are we with this? And when are you finishing it? it it's all always about. Um, so this was, uh, as I as I mentioned, about uh, 10 years back, 10 to 11 years back. It was always running behind somebody for status and chasing them kind of thing. And uh, when I started learning Scrum and how we do uh, you know, how, how we generally run the project. It was very interesting for me to know that there is a leadership style called servant leadership. You learn about it, but how do you be a servant leader, right? Is the biggest question. Now, one of the trainers, right? Uh, he he is, is is a CEO of one of the biggest Trump thing at this point of time. Um, he, he was saying that um, Guru... You know, it's uh, do he asked me, do you have um, kids? I said, yes, right? Now, how do you teach them something? How do you train them on something? I said that, yeah, it's, you know, I, I need a lot of patience. I need to ensure that they have the uh, right things at the right time to get it uh, and all that. So he said, you know, you might have to start looking at the teams, you know, like school children, right? Um, they are new to something. They definitely will throw tantrums, and there'll be a lot of, you know, uh, changes in the way they work. So you still need to, you know, understand their pain points and try to help them. So that is how it started. It, it was a small thing. It, it got started, and uh, the way I do it currently is, um, you know, in well, the wait, team, before you go into how you do it these days. Uh... I'm sure that, you know, from today's perspective, those words meant something to you. Yes. But uh, way back when, when you first heard those words, they were probably a bit confusing and, and puzzling, maybe. So walk yes. us through some of the questions that you went through as you heard those words. So it, it, it was mainly on how do you organize your activities so that you don't have to change, uh, you don't have to chase people for some update, right? I mean, as a project manager, I knew that I, I had this Gantt chart and I knew that this was this needs to be filled in, this is a capacity and all that. I do that even now, right? Even now we need all that to be done. But the way we approach people is like you train them, you coach them, and you know, you just guide them right? You're not behind them telling them what to do. You just guide them. It's like teaching cycling to a kid. At, after they learn to cycle after a bit, you just watch, stand and watch, ensure that they are in a safe environment. Let them cycle, right? Maybe a little bit here and there they fall down, but that's the way they learn it. So one aspect I always um, you know, uh, implement or, or, or I go through, right, is with having them own their 
work, right? The ownership is something that we need to give them. Um, while they say that Agile is all about empowering and challenging people, right? I think that's that's the route we have to keep in mind. In, in Instead of command and control, you empower people. You say that, yeah, this is what, this is your baby. You need to take care of it. Just let me know if you need any help. I'm here and uh, build that relationship, build that uh, trust with the team. And so I, I definitely agree with that, but uh, I'm, I'm hearing my old project manager self wait a, uh, saying, wait a minute, mm -hmm. of course you can give them the ownership of the work, but mm -hmm. what do you do when stuff doesn't get delivered? What do you do when the schedule starts falling behind? And, you know, if, if you think about it from a stakeholder perspective, yeah, of course they want you to chase them. Make it happen, Guru. Make it happen. What's preventing the team from delivering? Make it happen. So how do you handle that? Because the pressure isn't going anywhere, right? It, it, we know as Scrum Masters that it's great to give ownership and empowerment to the teams, but the stakeholders, they want stuff delivered. And I'm yes. sure you still get that pressure even today. So how do you handle that? Well, stakeholders um you know even if it's waterfall or scrum you're right you know there's always pressure right now it is very important that we tell stakeholders or even give them a little bit of overview that we are going to work in this fashion we are going to work in a fashion called um scrum okay or or any other um, agile frameworks and it's it's going to be like this now there is always the team life cycle, right? The forming, norming, storming, uh, the forming, storming, norming, performing phase always going on. And I ensure that I let the stakeholders know that we are going to use this framework here and it, it's going to be like this. Now, the other thing that stakeholders um, do is that, you know, apart from having that pressure because they have their deliverables they also want want to know what is happening on a daily basis right so involvement of the stakeholders you know gives a great visibility for the team as well as the stakeholders right um into what's happening per you know every day and many of the impediments are resolved by stakeholders or the leadership who, who are part of the call. So we keep them posted. We have a, a touch point, you know, uh, with the team or sometimes with, with the leads and ensure that there is a communication that is flowing, which is very important. I mean, it should be very transparent that this is where we are. This that's, what that's a very good point because one of the things that you said, which I, I would like to kind of expand on is that, of course, the team should own the work and how the work is done but so should the stakeholders, right? Because what one of the things that sometimes we forget is that the stakeholder's responsibility is to make sure that the team has everything they need in order to deliver what they're expected to deliver, right? So so the, the, the whole idea of pressure, especially when it comes to schedule pressure, also comes from this concept that the team is responsible for delivery. And, and that is true, but of course the team does not exist in the vacuum, right? Like the requirements they get and the quality of those comes from stakeholders not just right. product owner, uh, the interruptions they get, the quality of their materials and working conditions they get, like all of that comes from stakeholders. So the reverse of the medal of saying that the team is responsible for how they work is to say that the stakeholders are responsible for what the team cannot provide for themselves. And as you said, like if we create this transparency, then they can come in and help resolve those impediments. Definitely. And uh, I, I see that, uh, you know, many um, stakeholders there, there's a lot of maturity we see at this point of time you know compared to how it was earlier and uh, when we uh, talk to the stakeholders right um, we we understand that they have a time pressure they have um, you know they have something to deliver but in this in in, in the agile world right i mean it's it's not the people it's it's not um you know, uh, in, in the magic triangle, uh, time is something they have to be a little flexible about. We also tell them that, you know, you, you need to be a little flexible. We do things and 
we have to get that with quality. So I think um, that's that's how we can get started. And leadership, again, you know, when we work as Scrum Masters, get to the team, it is very important that they trust us, okay? And, and we don't show that we, we are uh, running the team, this is my team, uh, we have to do that. Uh, that that pressure wouldn't work and the co cost Ex of absolutely absolutely that's clearly one of the expectations that we need to set very early on with stakeholders thank you for sharing that guru no problem leading change is one of the core skills we must acquire but it is only one of the steps towards our success as scrum masters tomorrow on success thursday we will talk about how to define success for the scrum master role we'll cover tips on how to measure your way to that position and most importantly how to develop that focus on continuous improvement that is as important for scrum masters as it is for teams see you tomorrow we really hope you liked our show and if you did why not rate this podcast on stitcher or itunes Share this podcast and let other Scrum Masters know about this valuable resource for their work. Remember that sharing is caring.